Hey guys, welcome back to The Wine Rookie. I'm your Wine Rookie host, Paul, and today we are kicking off the episode with Trader Joe's Platinum Reserve Red Blend 2021 Vintage from the Catapoal Valley in Chile. So this bottle is 73% Cabernet Sauvignon, 11% Syrah, 9% Carmenere, 4% Petit Verdot, and 3% Cabernet Franc. So this bottle of Platinum Reserve is special because usually Trader Joe's uh, hides behind their own producer names and companies in order to prevent you from figuring out who makes the wine for Trader Joe's. Not for this bottle. I don't know what happened, what kind of deals they made with the producer, but you can actually go and find this exact wine from Viña San Pedro's website. So that's the producer. They're one of the biggest producers and exporters in Chile. Um, and this particular bottle uh, maybe sells for twice the price from Viña San Pedro themselves. Previous versions of this wine have received high accolades from Tim Atkin, James Suckling, Decanter, and many more uh, wine reviewers. Uh, scores in the mid to upper 90s, and this particular vintage has not been reviewed yet, it looks like, but the 2021 vintage in Chile was supposed to be exceptional for red blends, better than the years before that in which this wine received high accolades. So we're going to open up. Find out if it's worth $14.99 or double the price. First, B-roll. All right, everybody, we have the Trader Joe's Platinum Reserve Red Blend poured out for us, and we're going to take a closer look at all the aspects of this wine. On the channel, we are wine rookies here, so we start with the color. White sheet of paper, you want to be in a well-lit area, and we're going to look directly over this glass. So all the grapes that go into this wine are going to be on the thicker skin side. So I'm not surprised to see a deep ruby color here. Lots of pigment in this glass. The other visual aspects that you can look at before you go on to the next assessment would be uh, the tiers, of the wine tiers on the glass. This will give you a couple, two indications really. Um, we can kind of assess the alcohol content. Uh, this I think is 14.5%. So we can see uh, what a wine tier would look like from 14.5%. We can also get the visual cues of maybe residual sugars here um, because they tend to tear down slower and thicker with either a higher alcohol or higher residual sugar counts. So that's what these tiers are going to look like. I, can, I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but there you go. Um, and now we look at the aromas of this wine. What's the nose of this wine smell like? And we do that because 90, I don't, maybe it's not 90%, I don't know the exact percentage, but a lot of what we taste is actually from our sense of smell. So it's important to figure out what those uh, aroma compounds are in this because it can help unravel and detect uh, taste as well. So here we go. We're going to swirl the wine in the glass. That's going to coat the inside of the glass because alcohol is more volatile to uh, the air around us than the rest of the liquid in this glass. So as it evaporates, we will uh, dissect all these aroma compounds. Here we go. We take a lot of short breaths because it's kind of like uh, if you see dogs smelling, they don't just take one long whiff. They actually like, so we do the same thing when we're detecting the aroma compounds in a wine. It allows us to, uh, I guess, detect more scents in this wine. Uh, very fragrant, especially red fruit forward. I get notes of dark cherry, this dark black cherry. Uh, I get notes of raspberry as well as strawberry preserves. There's a lot of baking spice and vanilla and a little bit of cedar, which leads me to think that there might have been some, definitely some oak aging. Uh, and I'm leaning towards more of the French oak, most likely on this particular bottle. Uh, Chilean wines have a lot of heavily French influenced winemaking techniques. So French oak. 
Now we're going to go ahead and taste the wine. We're going to figure out if this bottle is actually worth $14.99 or $30 like Vina San Pedro sells it for. And uh, here we go. Well guys, talking about the body of this wine, this is going to be a medium, medium plus body. Pretty typical for Chile. I feel like Chile, uh, Chile and wines and other cool climated regions don't put out these big uh, California full bodied, really warm climate uh, wines. So this particular wine has notes of, again, it's reflecting mostly on those strawberry preserves. Uh, and raspberry, the cherry kind of disappears. Uh, really interesting enough, the baking spices disappear, a little hint of vanilla, but I actually get a lot of herbaceous notes from this, which is kind of typical of Chilean wines. I think eucalyptus and mint, but I also get some bell pepper from this, which might you might not think is a great tasting note, but it's kind of an afterthought of that taste, um, and you probably will only notice if you're actually trying to... Uh, fully engage with all the notes and the tasting notes of this particular bottle. Tannins, soft and silky, they kind of only there for a, a moment. But retro olfactory, so like I said, uh, our sense of smell is such a large input into what we're tasting. I can still taste this as I'm breathing in and out as I'm, I'm talking to you guys through the camera. So I'd say a medium, uh, medium long finish here to this wine, and it's quite good. It's a dry, uh, maybe off dry red blend for us. So there is some residual sugars left in this, but very little. It's mostly just fruit forward. Don't confuse those two things. A lot of people do. Um, and it just takes a lot of what is a sweet wine versus what is a fruity wine. Uh, so this is going to be more of just a fruit forward bottle of dry red wine. Uh, really good. Is it worth the $30 that uh, you could probably pick up a bottle for uh, branded? Mm, not necessarily. I wouldn't pay $30 for this bottle, but the $14.99 that I picked this up from Trader Joe's, it's definitely an exceptional red blend, and I would really enjoy to drink it. I probably would just drink it as, as is. I don't know if I really want to pair it with anything, but if I did... Probably with a, I think some of these really fruit forward notes would pair well with like a sweet barbecue sauce. Uh, so if you're going to do any grilled hamburgers and just smother it with barbecue sauce or hot dogs or uh, bratwurst or something, that season's coming up. So do that. Dare I say for a cheese pairing, not to do anything too complicated with it. And hear me out. I think Wisconsin cheddars are, are delicious, but they are the most bland cheddar cheese that I think you can get, and a sharp Wisconsin cheddar cheese I think would pair very well with this wine. Neither one is very uh, complicated, and uh, neither one's going to overpower each other. I actually think that would probably be a decent cheese to pair with this particular bottle. Again, if you pick this bottle up for $15, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. If you picked it up for $30, you might be saying, mm, I could have reevaluated this decision and maybe gotten something else. If you did pick it up, either way, the $30 bottle or the $15 bottle, let me know down in the comments what you thought. And uh, let me know down in the comments uh, if you would try another blend like this, a cool climated red blend, maybe Washington or another Chilean wine. Uh, and then maybe I'll pick it up and also review it on the channel because I'm interested in expanding my knowledge. We are wine rookies here, and uh, this is all about enjoying the art of wine. So cheers, everybody, and we'll see you next time for another Wine Rookie Tasting.